Today, on a special edition of Fixing the Money Thing. You know, we get a lot of emails and questions from people all over the world about healing. And because you asked, we're jumping into that topic, healing. Let's jump into some questions today that people have sent in, and let's find out what the answer is from the Word of God. Because you asked, healing, today on Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now I want to help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie. Fixing the Money Thing. Welcome to Because You Asked Healing. I'm Gary Cassie. I'm glad to have you with us as well as our studio audience today to talk about a very, very important topic, healing. You know, does God still heal? That's the question I get on multiple, multiple emails and questions as I travel the country. Does God still heal? And most people, let me say it this way, a lot of people are taught that he does not. In fact, you'll hear things like God allows bad things to happen. God allowed that person to have cancer, you know. So we have to address this issue. Does God still heal? And you have to have an answer for the question. And maybe it doesn't work if you're sick. You have to know that God still heals. Now, I believe in this life, in this body, that pretty much everyone at some time will have to believe God for health. We, we need to understand that we need to prepare and stand on what the Word of God says. So I believe everyone at some point in their life will need to stand on the Word of God. Not necessarily a life-threatening situation, but I'm just saying you need to know what the Bible says about healing. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 tells us this. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing, what, how many, every disease and every sickness. I think that would include anything that is now currently bothering you. You need to understand that Jesus healed them all, every disease and every type of sickness. Now, in Matthew chapter 8, verse number 17, again, we need to understand that healing was a trademark of Jesus' ministry. Everywhere he went, he healed. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 14 through 17, when Jesus came to Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her and she got up and began to wait on him. When evening came, many who were demon possessed were brought to him and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed. Again, we find the, the phrase what? All the sick. He healed all the sick. We also find attached to that, he drove out the spirits. So we'll talk about that in a minute. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. So we see that Jesus healed all the sick in his ministry. He, he had authority to heal all the sick. Of course, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, how he went around doing good, and again, healing what all who are under the power of the devil because God was with him. So basically those that are held captive under the jurisdiction of the kingdom of darkness can be set free by the power of God. Jesus did that. Understand this, Satan hates your body because God's presence, his authority dwells in your body. In the earth realm, the place you say, where's, where's the Holy Spirit at? Well, it's not, he's not in a temple made of stone. He is dwelling in fleshly bodies. He is in your body, and the Bible calls it the temple of the Holy Spirit. Satan thus hates our bodies. And he would, he would you know, love for us to be sick and incapacitated. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13 talks about this. Food is for the stomach and the stomach for food. But God will destroy them both, meaning that in the end, they're not, this body is not eternal. This body's not. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. So as the food is for a stomach and the stomach was created for food, our bodies were created for the Holy Spirit. Understand that. Okay. Just as our stomach is created for the specific purpose of handling digestion for food, 
food for the stomach and stomach for the food. Our bodies were created for the Holy Spirit to walk in this realm, the earth realm, uh, by, with the Holy Spirit. Verse uh, chapter 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you receive from God? You're not your own. You were bought at a price, therefore honor God with your body. Your body is holy. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. It is holy, and this scripture lets us know it is not your own. Okay, so for a proper perspective for us to understand the value of our body, we need to understand that it is purchased. Jesus paid for it. He owns it. Why does, he, why does he want to have access to your body? Of course, he wants you to be in health, but you are his hands and feet. The Holy Spirit dwells within you. Satan has, since beginning of time, tried to deface the human body, tried to bring it down to a lower level of honor than what God had intended. You'll find that he is consistently trying to devalue the human body. It is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, the church has been commissioned to take this healing to, the, to their generation. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18, And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name or my authority. They will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They'll place their hands on sick people and they'll get well. Now, when Jesus is talking about you know, picking up snakes, with their hands and all that. He's not really talking about snakes. He's talking about being able to pick up something deadly or under the kingdom of darkness, you know, drinking something poisonous or picking something up that's dangerous. It won't harm you. Jesus is referring to the authority that we now have in his kingdom, that uh, Satan and his plot and the uh, earth curse system will not overrun our lives. We now have authority to live as God has designed us to live. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I remember uh, back early in the ministry, actually before I pastored, another event that really caught my attention was I was invited to speak on finances uh, to a little church down in Albany, Ohio. So I went down. I was, I was not a pastor then, but we taught some principles and some basic fundamental financial principles because I've had a financial business for 34 years. At that meeting, the pastor's mom, we went to, after the church meeting, we went to the pastor's house. I met his mother, uh, Mrs. Stewart, who was there. And she's probably 80, maybe 80 years of age, late 70s. And we sat down and had dinner after our meeting there. And so we had dinner and then comes the dessert. And I was surprised, this, this 79-year-old mom, whoever she was, uh, we had a piece of pie and then she asked for a second piece of pie. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. And she said, no, uh, she says, you're probably wondering why I'm eating all this pie. She said, well, it's because I was a diabetic for over 20 years. And she said, I had it severe. I was in comas, went to the hospital. I mean, I almost died several times. And she said, I got to the point, I read a couple scriptures that seemed to indicate that Jesus still heals. So I took a three by five card and wrote the scriptures about healing on those cards. And at every meal, breakfast, lunch, and supper, I would read those scriptures and say, Father, I thank you that I, I am free from diabetes. One day she says she woke up and she was completely healed. And she said ever since that point, she's as much dessert as she can get her hands on because she likes it. Because for 20 <laughs> some years, she never had it. But you know what, that was an amazing story. And God loves amazing stories about his power. More Because You Asked, healing after this. Today, from Faith Life Now, three amazing and timely healing resources for you, your family, and our nation. Healing is a promise from God. In multiple scriptures, it says Jesus restored all to health. Your Bible also tells us that God isn't a respecter of persons. What he promises or did for one, he promises and does for all. In Live Whole, God's Health Care Plan, Gary teaches us what the Bible says about us and our healing. God wants to bring wholeness to your life. Live whole, God's health care plan. We talk about how I was healed, but countless others that were healed also. Yes. In this 10-part, six-CD mentorship series, packed with real stories of healing and wholeness, Gary teaches on the scriptural promises concerning healing and your ability to access them. 
Your health is more than just important to your finances. It's vital to your destiny. Live Whole messages include healing. It's your legal right. Building your faith. Being confident in God's promises. Learning to trust. Keeping your focus on the truth. Changing your perception with evidence and more. God wants you to live whole. Call or log on now to start employing God's health care plan. Also, Gary and Brenda's daughter, Amy, shares her own miraculous story in her book, Healed Overnight. I lost 13 pounds and nine inches in my waist overnight. I was healed of a tumor and you can be healed from whatever is going on in your life today, whether it's emotional, mental, uh, physical, or spiritual. The perfect companion to live whole, Amy's book, Healed Overnight, will spark hope and encouragement so you can believe for your miracle. So I encourage you today to get healed overnight, my encounter with the supernatural. As a bonus, to help you live whole every day, we want to send you 10 healing scripture cards in the convenient carrying case. Each business-sized card displays a vital verse about healing. Call, write, or go to faithlifenow.com to get the Live Whole Mentorship Series for yourself. $45 for Live Whole, God's Healthcare Plan on six CDs, Amy's book, Healed Overnight, and the bonus 10 healing scripture cards. For your gift of just $20 or more, get Healed Overnight and the scripture cards. Remember, Jesus already paid the price for your healing. Call, write, or go online and get the Live Whole Mentorship Series now. And now, another story of healing to build your faith on fixing the money thing. So both the boys were under the care of an orthodontist and um, so they would go twice a year and get their teeth checked and um, they kind of keep doing that and decide if they need braces or not. And uh, Zachary had gone and had his um, appointment and he had his teeth x-rayed and they took us in and they said, you know what, he has a tooth that's impacted so it's sideways and it's pushing on the adult tooth and it's damaging that root so that tooth has got to be extracted to give way for the other tooth to come up. It's the only way to fix it. So when I went in stuff and took x-rays, when they told me that I uh, had to get a tooth pulled, it just didn't sound like fun because and it wasn't because she told me that they take like these plier looking things and just kind of rip it out. So it didn't sound very fun to me. So I just started praying about it. What made me think that um, that it would, well, if I prayed, it would heal me is just because I know like whenever you first pray that you're healed then. So I would just for the rest of the time, I would just keep thanking him for it and stuff. And that's why I kept doing it and stuff. And then I go back and so I just kind of kept doing it. Several years ago, Pastor Gary um, had taught a series on healing. It was about 10 weeks long. It was called Live Whole Series. I like to say Pastor Gary puts the cookies on the bottom shelf. Like he just made it accessible for everyone. And so I'd had asthma for 30 years, been in and out of hospital, uh, took medication every day, steroids for flare ups, and it's just a miserable way to live. And so at the end of that series, um, I received healing. And so completely healed of asthma, threw all my medication away. Um, just like a complete life transformation. So just like seeing her pray and believing in faith that that she would get healed, it just uh, kind of helped me have more faith about it because she did get healed and it made me think that I can get healed too. A few months went by and I, I just kept meaning to make the appointment to go and see the dentist and get the tooth pulled and um, I just, I didn't get around to doing it. And so at our next orthodontist appointment, they said, why did you not have that tooth out? I said, you know, we meant to do it. You know, we got really busy, but we'll absolutely make an appointment and get that done. And um, so they said, well, we're gonna take x-rays to make sure there's no more damage done. And so they took Zachary into the other room and um, he went and got x-rays and he came back in and the tech was like, oh my goodness, like this tooth is completely straight. Like. I don't know how it is, but it's completely straight. And so she's like, I'm gonna go get the orthodontist. And so Zach just turned and looked at me and he's like, told you, I just knew it was gonna be straight. I prayed. And so from the last appointment, I guess, he came out of there thinking, that doesn't sound too good to get a tooth pulled out. So I don't want that. So I'm just gonna pray and ask God to straighten my tooth. And he had not actually said anything to us. So we didn't know he was praying and believing that. And um, like I said, we had always intended that tooth would get pulled and that was the way to fix it. But you know, he's been growing up in Faith Life Church and he's been taught about the kingdom and he understands how it operates. 
decades. And, and so he just decided, you know what, by faith, this tooth is going to straighten itself. When the tech person came out and told that to me, at first I was surprised, but then I thought to myself, like, why should I be surprised? Like, God, like, always will come through if you really have faith in him. And that just like now, whenever like I get sick or something, I just pray and I know that I will be healed because I've seen it being done before, so. You know, as a mom, um, it's exciting to see your kids know at a young age that the kingdom works and that God cares about all details of our life and um, even things that might seem, you know, insignificant or, hey, it's just a tooth. People get teeth pulled out all the time. But um, I was just so excited to see that he knew that faith works even to straighten a tooth. And if it works for that, you know, it works in all um, circumstances. And for him to see him stand on the Word of God and to, um, you know, to know that the Bible, what it says about healing and to lay claim to that and to speak that and then to know that it's done. So it's just exciting to see at a young age them standing on the kingdom and understanding how it operates. Let's return to the studio and continue Because You Asked Healing. You know, we get a lot of emails and questions from people all over the world about healing. And because you asked, we're jumping into that topic, healing. Let's jump into some questions today that people have sent in, and let's find out what the answer is from the Word of God. So we have our audience here today, and they've turned some questions in. So let's start there with question number one. In the story of Mark chapter 8, verse 22 through 25, the writer describes Jesus spitting on a man's eyes, and then he laid his hands on him. Jesus then asked the man what he was experiencing, and the man said, I see men like trees walking around. In verse 25, it says, Jesus again put his hands on the man's eyes, and then his eyes were completely open. Here's the question. Please explain how Jesus could pray a second time to see the complete manifestation of the man's healing. Are there then times when a person is ministering to one who is sick that they may need to pray more than once for a complete manifestation of that one's healing? So let's put that scripture on the screen if we can. That's Mark chapter 8, verse 23 through 25. But first, let me define our terms. The person who asked the question asked, should Jesus pray a second time? I need to ask you, did Jesus pray at all? He didn't pray at all. Okay, this is very important as far as how authority operates. You'll never see Jesus praying, but commanding. Jesus always took authority, and he, he didn't pray. So that's one thing we need to stop. That's how I say that. We don't want to stop praying. But what I'm saying is if, if healing is a finished work, if it, you already have it, okay, understand, healing is already yours by the finished work that Jesus paid for. You wouldn't have to ask for something you already have. But you do have to receive it, and there's a process, but the term pray is not proper here. Jesus did not pray a second time, nor did he pray the first time. So that'll give you a clue on how you receive right there. But let's look at the scripture here in Mark chapter 8. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village when he had spit on the man's eyes, put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around, meaning that's probably blurry still. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. His sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Now, again, how you come to the Bible, your, your understanding of what legally has been given and how the kingdom of God operates helps to find, helps you begin to learn how to interpret scripture. So we have something here. First off, did the man come to Jesus by himself? No, he was brought to Jesus. All right. So he was brought to Jesus. Now what I'm about to say, this is my personal opinion. Okay. From the story, we gather facts, but this is my personal opinion. Notice Jesus is the vessel. Okay. The anointing as we studied earlier in our series, because you asked, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was baptized by the Holy Spirit at the River Jordan. Okay, so the Holy Spirit, the vessel, he is the vessel or the point of contact in the earth realm of the government of God, right? You got that part. All right, so he lays, why is laying on of hands a doctrine of the church? Because we are the vessel of the Holy Spirit 
when we lay hands on people, that is like an electric, electric current or it's a conduit, it's a point of contact that allows that anointing to flow from our bodies to that person. And in Hebrews chapter 6, I think Paul talks about laying on of hands. Of course, Jesus told us to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, laying of hands is not the only way you receive from God. But in this particular case, it's what Jesus did. He laid his hands on him and he put some spit on his eyes so as a point of contact. The man had some restoration of his eyes, but it wasn't complete. My theory is, now obviously we know that Jesus has the ability to heal. My theory is, is that the man didn't quite know what was going on, that when Jesus laid his hands on him, he tapped into that anointing. But when he began to see things, he was encouraged to believe God for the, you know, he was encouraged. You follow what I'm saying? He was brought to Jesus. And so I'm not quite sure that his, it doesn't say his faith, he didn't ask to come which is an important aspect, that he was brought to Jesus. And we'll talk about what I'm talking about a little bit later. But my theory is, is that he had some impact, that anointing. That then encouraged him. Jesus read his faith and laid his hands on him a second time, and he was able to completely receive that anointing, if that makes any sense. It will, we'll talk more about that later, about how the kingdom legally flows into the earth realm. But that's my theory on that, okay? Again, having a proper understanding of how it operates helps you define these things. Question number two from our audience, Mark chapter 6, 1 through 6, Matthew 13, 58, says that Jesus could do no mighty works in his own hometown. In fact, let's just put that on the screen right now. Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who, were, who heard him were amazed where did the man get these things? They said, what's this wisdom that has been given to him that he, he does miracles? Now, where did this happen at? In his hometown. Okay, you need to have that down, hometown. Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Meaning, who does he think he is? We know this guy. He's a carpenter. Jesus said to them, only in his hometown among his relatives and in his own house is a prophet without honor. Honor refers to the ability to receive. You honor something, you respect it, you receive from it, okay? He could not, he could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. The question here then is, did Jesus pray for some who needed healing in his hometown that did not receive healing? Could it be that because uh, they were not healed, they didn't uh, come to him and they didn't come because they were familiar with him? And I would say, yes, that's definitely true. But let's ask the question, did he pray for people that weren't healed? I would say no. Today from Faith Life Now, three amazing and timely healing resources for you, your family, and our nation. Healing is a promise from God. In multiple scriptures, it says Jesus restored all to health. Your Bible also tells us that God isn't a respecter of persons. What he promises or did for one, he promises and does for all. In Live Whole, God's Health Care Plan, Gary teaches us what the Bible says about us and our healing. God wants to bring wholeness to your life. Live whole, God's health care plan. We talk about how I was healed, but countless others that were healed also. Yes. In this 10-part, six-CD mentorship series, packed with real stories of healing and wholeness, Gary teaches on the scriptural promises concerning healing and your ability to access them. Your health is more than just important to your finances. It's vital to your destiny. Live whole messages include healing, it's your legal right, building your faith, being confident in God's promises, learning to trust, keeping your focus on the truth, changing your perception with evidence, and more. God wants you to live whole. Call or log on now to start employing God's health care plan. Also, Gary and Brenda's daughter, Amy, shares her own miraculous story in her book, Healed Overnight. I lost 13 pounds and nine inches in my waist overnight. I was healed of a tumor and you can be healed from whatever is going on in your life today, whether it's emotional, mental, uh, physical, or spiritual. The perfect companion to live whole, Amy's book, Healed Overnight, will spark hope and encouragement so you can believe for your miracle. 
So I encourage you today to get healed overnight, my encounter with the supernatural. As a bonus, to help you live whole every day, we want to send you 10 healing scripture cards in the convenient carrying case. Each business-sized card displays a vital verse about healing. Call, write, or go to faithlifenow.com to get the Live Whole Mentorship Series for yourself. $45 for Live Whole, God's Healthcare Plan on six CDs, Amy's book, Healed Overnight, and the bonus 10 healing scripture cards. For your gift of just $20 or more, get Healed Overnight and the scripture cards. Remember, Jesus already paid the price for your healing. Call, write, or go online and get the Live Whole Mentorship Series now. So I hope this session has helped you understand how faith works and how healing comes and that our session, because you asked on healing, I hope that's helped you a lot. Be more confident that God will heal, always wants to heal every time. Fixing the Money Thing is brought to you by the Ford Financial Group and Lindsay Honda and Acura of Columbus. When you need God's help, prayer is always the answer. Pastor Gary understands and wants to help. That's why he has caring friends standing by 24 hours a day, seven days a week, ready to pray with you. No matter what you're facing, there is hope. Call and let's agree together. Caring prayer partners are available faithfully any time of the day or night. You can also leave your prayer request at GaryCasey.com. Just click and know someone will be agreeing with you in prayer for your need to be met. still here. You're still here. Pastors Gary and Drendica C. invite you to experience Faith Life Church for yourself. We're excited for you to experience love, community, and the good life. Located on the northeast side of Columbus at 2407 Beach Road in New Albany, Faith Life Church meets in the Now Center and offers something for every age. Join us every weekend for life-changing kingdom teaching, inspiring worship, and a family focus. Saturday service starts at 6 p.m. Sunday morning, we meet at 9, 10, 30, and noon. You're also invited to join us for First Wednesday service every month at 7 p.m. And if you can't make it to a service, join us at faithlifechurch.org for live streaming and access to past services as well. Visit faithlifechurch.org for directions and more information. Join us this week at Faith Life Church, where you can experience love, community, and the good life. Your gifts and partnership make fixing the money thing possible. Today's show is a presentation of Faith Life Now.